Hi my fragrance friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here, I always appreciate you. Today is gonna to be kind of a long one. Today I'm gonna to be going over my entire Middle Eastern collection. I have about 40 in it. Um, I have a total perfume collection, I'm assuming at this point, at 200 or over 200. Um, but for my Middle Eastern collection, it's about 40. This one's gonna be a long one, so I would suggest that maybe you get a snack, get some coffee, get some tea, or you just, you know, maybe put me on in the background while you do some chores. And I will try my best not to get into detail about any per uh, perfume in particular, because sometimes I can get a little carried away when I really, really love a scent. Um, I just want to give you like all the deeds, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to just give an overview so we're not here too long. This might be about 45 minutes long, just warning you in advance because it is a collection video and I do have 40 and sometimes I like to chitty chat. So we're just going to hop right in. Um, so we're just going to start from right here. Here we have Jezab Gold by Art Al Zafran. And this is a really nice, sweet scent. If it is a dupe for anything, I honestly have no idea. It is sweet. Um, I believe there's saffron in here, and I think there is myrrh in here, so there's a slightly instancy to make it interesting, but not be overbearing. Um, and this is one of those underrated gems. It just needs more love here. And just look at that bottle. I mean, can we just take a moment and just appreciate this beautiful gold bottle? So if you like sweet scents, you like slightly incense scents, this is good. Um, I think this is a decent projector. It's not like super strong, but it's also not a skin set. It's like a moderate projector. And I think the longevity is about four to five hours and highly recommend this and it's super affordable, I believe. Um, when I bought it a while ago, it was maybe under, uh, under $40. Um, but again, here I am, again, with the details, I'm sorry. Sweet, nice, slightly instant scents. Uh, Jazz of Gold by Ard Al Zafran. Okay, moving right along. Here we have one from Rasasi. This one is Ibhar, uh, Kasamat Ibhar. And this is a nice, sweet, praline, slightly caramelly apple scent. And when I first talked about it in my vanilla video, I don't know how I missed to mention this, but there is no almond note noted in the notes, but there is a slightly almondy smell to this, which just makes it intriguing, I think. And I was reading that tonka bean can come off as slightly almondy. So I think that might be what's giving it that slight almond note. So it's like appley, almondy, caramelly. Um, so I highly recommend this. And I saw in Fragrantica that people comp compared it to Swiss Arabian Casablanca. I have not smelled that. But I've never heard anybody say Casablanca smells almondy. And people just generally describe that as smelling like apple juice. This is so much more than that. This is woody, this is apple-y, this is caramelly, and this is almondy. And I think it's very sophisticated and very sweet. So again, this is Rasasi Kasamet Ibhet, and highly recommend this one. Moving right along. We have another one from the Rasasi Kasamet line. This is Barikh, and Barikh is nice. I, I really haven't reached for this. This smells similar to um, Baccarat Rouge 540. Um, very similar, slightly, I think, more woodier than that. Less sweet, a little bit more woodier, um, but I definitely think it's very similar to Baccarat Rouge 540, and I'm adoring the bottle, but I really don't reach for it, but um, I, just fell in love with it, so I, I had to have it because apparently I'm a completionist when it comes to collections. I try my best to finish off the collection. So again, this is Barikh by Arasasi in the Kasamet line. Moving right along to the next one. We have another one from the Arasasi Kasamet line. This is Rasana. This is a superbly popular one. This one is appley, woody. I believe there's some kind of citrusy note in here. And this is definitely a unisex one, and I am in love with this one. This is long lasting on both the skin and the clothes. This projects. Um, for ladies who like superbly feminine scents, I would not recommend this for you unless you are into unisex scents. Um, I just love this. This is so refreshing, and to me, I 
can wear this in the warm and wear this in the cold. To me, it's just one of those things. For me, apple is a year-round year perennial scent, so it's irrelevant for the time, but I will. I love wearing this. So again, this is Resena um, in the Resessi Kasemet line. And then wrapping up the Resessi Kasemet line, we have here, this is really underrated. I don't really hear anybody talk about this. This is Resessi Kasemet Morhav. And this is the one with the pink tassel on it. And this is so nice. This is beautiful. I absolutely love this one. Um, and this one is, out of all of these, the most Middle Eastern smelling of them all. This has rose. Um, there's wood, wood in here. Um, I believe there's Aoud in here. And just so for people who are not familiar with the pronunciation, when I say Aoud, it's the same thing when I say Oud. So Aoud, Oud, Oud, Aoud, same thing. Um, I'll flip between both um, both pronunciations. Um, sorry if I slip and say Aoud and you don't know what I'm talking about. It's Oud. So there's oud in here and there's incense in here as well. And this is a really beautiful scent. Um, this is a unisex, but again, um, I think on the meter, it leans a little bit more on the female side, but I can definitely see males pulling this off as well because it just plays differently on males chemistry, I'm sure. Again, so this is rosy, slightly incense-y. It kind of smells like bohur, um, but a wearable kind of bohur. And bohur is essentially like incense, as you would say in English. So. Beautiful rosy bahur um, and, uh, scent. So again, this is Morhaf by Resessi Kasamet line. Moving right along, we have another um, little hidden gem. Well, not hidden gem. I guess it's just underrated gem. This is Bedun Essam by Ahmed Al Maghribi. And can we just take a moment for the bottle with the Arabic calligraphy all over it? I, I just it's a stunner with this bottle so this is a beautiful woody rosy scent and here the the rose is a little bit watery um and there's strong out in here this is not for beginner um beginners who are trying to get in out this is definitely more of i would think in my humble opinion i think this would be more of an intermediate more advanced out um, so if you're trying to get into this world, this definitely would not be for you unless you know you love Aouds, especially the Rose Aoud um, DNA. I would highly recommend to have this in your collection, even just for collection purposes. Personally, for me, I don't necessarily reach for it. Um, I mean, one, I have a lot of perfumes, but two, there is a slight transition in this that it can come off the Aoud can come off slightly barnyardish for about 10 to 15 minutes. So when you first put it on, it's awesome. Then it goes through a little transition about 10, 15 minutes where it can come off a little unpleasant for me, for my nose. Um, but then again, it transitions again and that rose comes out, out more, that Aoud calms down. Um, so I have to kind of be in the mood to reach for this. I have to be in the mood for Oud. Um, but again, if you are a hardcore, like, Rose Owl Collector, I would highly recommend you get Badun Sam into your collection. Um, and I think this would be a beautiful gem to have. And this is a beast. Like when I sprayed it on my robe, I smelt it the next day. That is how strong this is. And again, this is Badun Sam by Ahmed Al Maghribi. Really beautiful gem. Next one up is a super popular one here. Uh, this is Al Haramain. Uh, this is Amber Oud Rogue. Rogue? 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 Rogue, oh my goodness. Amber Oud Rogue. Um, this is a dupe of Baccarat Rouge 540. This one I reach for a little bit more. You can see I have a little bit of a dent here. Um, I wear this in conjunction with my Baccarat Rouge 540 because sometimes I can go agnosmic to BR 540 while wearing it and I love that DNA. So what I do, I pair this along with BR 540. I kind of like alternate it. So I don't go agnosmic to it, but again, it's strong. So I have to be really careful with it. This, But this is a, a really, really good dupe for BR 540, Baccarat Rouge 540. And if you do not want to spend $300 on a perfume, I would highly recommend this. I think it's about 500, uh, 500 oh my goodness, about $50 or thereabouts for this, or maybe less. So again, this is Al Haramain Amber Oud Rouge. And the next one up we have Al Haramain um, Amber Oud Gold Edition. 
Um, apparently this is similar to, I'm trying to get the proper image here for you guys. Apparently this is similar to Herba Pura by Zerodrop. I have not smelled Herba Pura by Zerodrop, but I do know I like this scent. It's a really fruity, um, cantaloupe scent. Oh, here we go. So I was trying to get the image for you. Um, this is fruity. This is cantaloupe. This is strong. And I, here's this little thing I kind of want to talk to you guys about, about al Haramein scents and just general Middle Eastern scents. This is a theory I have, and this has nothing to do with maceration. I was really kind of thinking about it. Um, I've noticed that especially al Haramein scents, you know how when you first spray uh, a, a Middle Eastern scent and you, you spray it one time and then again you visit it a week later and a week later and a week later and then eventually at some point you like it. I think, or it comes off too strong, um, or maybe there's this synthetic key smell when you first spray it. I think that you have to empty out the, the straw here. So what I mean by that, when you first get it, a brand new uh, Middle Eastern scent, I don't know what happens in the international tra um, transport process, but I think there's some kind of chemical in the straw or some kind of chemical reaction that happens with the straw that creates this really synthetic key scent in the straw or it over enhances the smell to the point where a person can't stand it like al haramein um, um howard gold edition was too strong for me and i was listening all over the internet other people thought it was too strong for them too but i don't think your nose adjusted to it because what i did with this one i sprayed it into the air four to five times and then i sprayed it again and then it was different so when you first get your um middle eastern bottles i know it's probably going to make some of you cringe because you're going to think it's a waste but what's more of a waste is just sitting on your collection and you're never using it because you think it's too strong or too synthetic you take it spray it four to five times empty out that straw and i'm telling you immediately the scent is going to be different so just a little theory I have. So I just wanted to stick that in here because um, when I was discovering my um, al Haramein scents, that's when it came to me. And I practiced it with a few of other ones here um, and it made a difference. So when you first get it in the mail, spray it in the air four to five times and then you will actually get the more authentic scent to it. Um, so much for not being chitty chatty. Um, okay, let's start here. Uh, here we have Anab. Uh, this is by, I think, Ahmed al-Maghribi as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Anna by Ahmed al-Maghribi. I hope I'm... Yeah, I think this is Ahmed al-Maghribi. This is similar to Britney Spears' fantasy. But here's the thing. Because I really don't hear people talking about the similarity to Britney Spears' fantasy. I see it on Fragrantica. But here's my thing. It's Britney Spears' fantasy, but better. It... It takes that, so when I wear Britney Spears Fantasy, it's too citrusy in the beginning. So it's like this one gets to the good part of fantasy right away. This is like it's more sophisticated sister. You get straight to the kiwi and the white chocolate right away. So this is like this creamy kiwi white chocolate smooth version of Britney Spears fantasy. So if you wanted to like Britney Spears fantasy but couldn't get into it because you couldn't get past the opening or you thought maybe it was a little bit childish and you want you kind of wanted to get into the DNA though. So this has kiwi, um, this has white chocolate and it's a smooth white chocolate kiwi scent. It's like Britney Spears but elevated. Britney Spears fantasy but elevated. Um, and it's really strong so that's actually a pretty decent dent that I have in there. Highly recommend if you didn't really jive for Britney Spears fantasy, but you kind of sort of liked it on the dry down. This is that dry down immediately. White chocolate kiwi, beautiful scent. Highly, highly recommend. And this one I'm hesitant to share. Oh my God. Oh, I don't want to share this one. It's so precious. Okay. So this is Etiab Al Mashoud. This is number four. I love this scent right here. At Etiab Al Mashoud. Number four, I don't know if you can see it there. It's really small writing. Um, this is a really nice, oh, this is so good. This is cardamom, this is mint. Uh, there is, um, I think there's bergamot in here. And there's something slightly creamy to it. Again, I don't remember all the notes off the top of my head. I just know that it is a beautiful scent. And when I was hanging out with my brother a while ago, it is a sibling's prerogative to always bust your chops, right? Or they never compliment you if ever or they kind of give you a sort of backwards compliment if that makes any sense but even my my brother 
who always likes to bust my chops, even told me that this is a unique scent. This is absolutely unique. And trust me, he doesn't say that lightly. And I just love this. So it's minty, it's cardamomy, it's like, it's spicy, but like a cool spicy. I have no idea if that makes sense because people always say warm spicy. But to my nose, this is like a cool, calming kind of spicy. And I think it might be because of that mint and there's something creamy in here. And I sense bergamot in here. I don't remember if that's what's in there, but that is what I'm getting. And this is unisex, equally beautiful on a man and on a woman. And if you like um, spicy scents, this is a really one to venture into. And I feel like even if you're not into spicy scents because it has that cooling effect, like a cold spicy effect, I think you could still really appreciate this. Again, Atiab Armashud, number four. Highly, 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 highly bloody recommend this. Okay, moving right along. We have another Atiab Armashud. This is pink. Uh, yeah, there's, it just says pink on the bottle. So this is a raspberry oud floral scent. Um, this wouldn't be for everybody. So this kind of takes me on a journey when you first spray at the Al-Murshid pink. So it, it grows on you in the sense that when you first spray it, it smells superbly synthetically. I actually washed it off my hand when I first tested it. Um, I did not give it a chance to calm down. But eventually I revisited it and I'm glad I did. It was really beautiful. It actually becomes a soft feminine scent. Very soft, very smooth, very rounded. Uh, raspberry, white floral, um, or I wouldn't know white floral, maybe yellow florals, a mix of white and yellow florals, um, and oud scent. And personally, I don't really interpret the oud as oud. I think it's more like a woody. Oud, I, it's not your typical oud in this. I think the composition might be a little bit different. It's more like woody. Um, so this isn't going to be for everybody, but if you are adventurous and you like floral scents, slightly powdery, and you are patient, I would recommend this for you. But again, this is not going to be a safe blind buy because this is superbly synthetic -y. on the opening and straight out of the cap, but it does this magic on the skin. And it, you would think this would be a powerhouse, but it's not. It's actually really not. It's very you know, something creamy about it, something rounded about it, and it'd be at least with an arm's projection of you. Um, so if you're adventurous, you like raspberry floral scents, uh, and you just want to get into collecting Middle Eastern perfumes, uh, this is based in France, but this is a Middle Eastern um, brand though. Uh, so if you're, if you just want to collect or you want to just experiment, um, why not? So Atiyab al Murshud pink, Moving right along, we have Armaf. All you need is passion. I love this scent for like every day. And once this finishes, I definitely will be repurchasing this. Oh, I'm just trying to just refresh my memory here. Mm. Oh my God. This doesn't last more than four to five hours, but honestly, I don't care because I mix majority of my fragrances a lot of the time anyway. And I get compliments on this. It's, um, you, I think you're langling in here. So like, it's like a cr slightly creamy, hold on. Yeah, there's something refreshing about this, but not like in an aquatic way, just like very summery, springy, ylang-ylang. It's a really beautiful, like floral scent. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the bottle. Um, and I didn't tell you the name. You know, I said Armaf, yeah. Armaf, all you need is passion. Uh, although this is, uh, Armaf is in a Middle Eastern brand, it's not a Middle Eastern scent. I don't care, I love this, and I don't know if this is a dupe for anything, at least not to my nose. I, I obviously haven't smelled every bloody perfume in the world, but um, it is a beautiful, inexpensive eye perfume. It's a mood brightener for me. I get compliments on it from people near me. Um, and it's a nice floral, I think there's passion fruit in here or some kind of fruit that just raises it up um, and it's beautifully balanced. But to me, when I, I smell this, it immediately just comes to mind immediately is yellow floral. So I'm thinking it's ylang-ylang in here. Um, this is an uh, inoffensive, mass-pleasing scent and definitely an underrated gem here and highly recommend this. And I'm, I'm definitely gonna get a backup of this because I think I'm probably up to here with this. So again, Armaf, all you need is passion. Highly recommend if you love yellow floral scents. And the next one, 
I literally, I, I'm actually hesitant to kind of put it here because I have not heard anybody mention it here on YouTube. I've heard them mention the original, but this is a flanker. Um, and it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. And I for granted because there's only like one review on this. This is Entice 2 by Edgemel. So there's an original Entice, which is like a yellow color of the liquid. This is pink. I don't know if you can see. Oh, here you can see it's pink here. So this is a flanker of the original, the original Entice. Um, so this is Edgemel Entice 2. And this is a florally, musky, rosy scent. And I absolutely love it. Oh my God, when you catch wafts of yourself in the air, it is amazing. And online on Fragrantica, I think somebody had compared it to Chloe. No, was it Chloe? I don't remember. Um, gosh, darn. oh yeah, I think it was Chloe. I think they might've compared it to Chloe or something like that. But in my opinion, um, I haven't smoked Chloe, so I don't know about that. But this is not a dupe, okay? This is just, I'm trying to explain to you what it smells like. It's rosy, musky, and florally. Do you know Roses Gritty by Mansara? So I tried them side by side. And in Roses Gritty, there's also a musk scent. So there is a similar DNA in Roses Gritty that is in Edgemel and Ten, uh, Entice 2. Um, again, they're, they're not like dupes, but there is a DNA especially in that middle transition, they are superbly similar because I tried it arm to arm. Um, but I actually prefer this. I don't know why. Um, they're similar and I think it's worth having both Roses Greedy and Entice Echmel in your collection. And this is affordable. This is affordable. And this would definitely be a repurchase for me. Again, so musky, florally, rosy scent. And this is definitely going to be a repurchase and you can see I have a healthy dent in here and I have over 200 perfumes in my collection and there's a bloody dent in here so that you know how when you listen to youtubers and they say how much they love a scent but there's no dent in it so like in the back of your mind you're like eh, do you really do you really do you really love the scent or you're just saying that so you'll see when I say I love a scent you'll see dents in my perfumes like the proof is in the dent forget my words ignore my words just look at the dent I have over 200 perfumes and there's a dent in here so just let that sink in okay so again I smell in 10 and ties too highly recommend I'm gonna definitely speed this long I am sorry oh my goodness um this is I uh, haven't seen anybody on YouTube talk about this either. This is Recessi um, Genuine Velvet on Fragrantica. They compared, oh, I just like the little tag over here. Um, this is compared to Frederick Mall Portrait of a Lady, which is a spicy rose scent. Again, I have not smelled Frederick Mall Portrait of a Lady. I only have um, Musk Ravature by Frederick Mall. Um, so I don't know if it's true or not. As you can see, there's no dent in here. I'm trying to see if I appreciate it. I tried it at least three times, spot testing, and I haven't been a fan of it. This definitely is a spicy um, rose scent. Um, and I'm sure that it is a fraction of, this is like $70 for this tiny little 1.7, but I know it's still a fraction of the cost of of Portrait of a Lady and on Fragrantica it did get good reviews but for me as of right now I, I, I'm still trying to learn to maybe like it if not I'm gonna have to give it up but if you like spicy rose scents like Portrait of a Lady um, I would recommend this to you but for me it's been sitting in my collection for months and I just haven't given it any love but I, I love the bottle because Recessi it just always kills it with the bottles all right uh, let's just jump here okay so here we have uh, Sharaf um, Swiss Arabian Sharaf Aoud Abiyad. And so for this one, hmm. So this is, I think, labeled as um, unisex, but it's irrelevant. Oops, my, my thing got stuck to my bracelet. So this has pimento seeds. This is smoky, spicy, um, and it's compared to some kind of male cologne, but I do know women can get with this as well. But for me, it's it's not a go. I'll I'll keep it in my collection. I'm gonna explain it to you why. One for I just wanted to complete the the collection the for for these bottles. But more importantly, it is a smoky, spicy, strong 
um, scent. It smells like open air smoke and to me it comes off as cigarettes. So when I smell this, I feel like I'm around family and the men in the corner are smoking the cigars and there's kebabs um, roasting literally on an open fire. Um, so it brings back really good memories to me and every time I just open it and I smell it, I can literally smell like the memories so vividly of like kebabs cooking and like, you know, the open pits um, and the fire, you can see the, the crackling of the coals and I can hear like the men chattering in the back and I can smell their cigarettes and their cigars kind of wafting and all that smoke just kind, kind of coming together but it evokes good memories in me. So that's why I will always keep it because it, it's when you it's like a memory in a bottle and I won't give it up. And people said, you know, let it play down. And I've tried this at least two times wearing it twice and I just can't get with it. I actually have to change my clothes. Um, people say, you know, let it play on your skin. Give it 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Just the dry down is better. No, I can't get with the dry down. I can't get with the, the, the top. I can't get with the middle. I can't get with the bottom. I just, I can't. Um, but I will keep it. And if you like those adventurous scents, I highly recommend this for you. If you like smoky, um, spicy, complicated scents, you're going to like this. And again, this is Shara Faoud um, Abiyad. Moving right along. I have never heard any other woman talk about this on YouTube. And this is labeled as a male scent. Um, this is Sharaf for him. If you're familiar with any of my videos, you'll know that I do wear unisex male leaning and sometimes male fragrances. And for me, I think a woman can get away with this. There's praline in here and you get the praline right away. You get lavender, you get lemon. Um, it's woody. It's just beautiful. Um, it's strong. It's long lasting. Um, I don't know. I. Oh my God, it's refreshing. There's water notes in here. Oh my God, ladies, this is a beautiful white t-shirt scent. If you don't mind unisex scents, and I am thinking of a few YouTubers that I know for a fact that um, appreciate unisex male leaning fragrances and even male fragrances in general, I think this should be labeled as unisex. In my opinion, I think this should be. Um, I think they mislabeled it. I think they just needed a her and a him and whatever. But there's that beautiful lavender, the aquatic nose, you get that praline right away. But it's not like a cloying kind of sweetness. It's like a fresh kind of um, sweetness from the praline because the aquatic nose balance it out and got that lavender, got that lemon, and this is beautiful. You can't overspray this, so it be careful with this because I'm an oversprayer and I actually um, oversprayed it and I gave myself a headache. So this is strong, this strong, this sticks, this projects. So I would recommend no more than four to five sprays at most to really get the beauty of the details in here. And you have to wear this with a beautiful white t-shirt and it's just, it is a mood lifter. It is a mood lifter. It makes me happy just to smell it in the air and on my skin. Oh, so good, so good. Again, um, I recommend for the men and I recommend it for you ladies. But this is labeled as a male perfume, but I'm telling you ladies, if you like masculine scents or unisex scents, um, this is Shaga for him. Moving right along. The next one in the collection is the Shaga for her. Uh, and this definitely is a female leaning fragrance. Um, and you can see the humongous scent that I have in here. I absolutely love this. This has praline, it has lemon and lime, I think, and an apple and lotus. And I bought this by accident. I actually didn't mean to buy this like a while ago. It was an accidental purchase. I meant to buy something else, but that's how you know you have a shopping issue. Yeah, when you purchase perfumes and you don't even know that you bought it until the package arrives and I pulled it out and I said, what is this? I, I, I was dumbfounded. I'm like, what is this? This is not what I ordered. Um, or rather, I did not order this because I got what I ordered, but I got something also th this. And I, I know for a fact I clicked on it, but I, I thought I clicked on something else. I don't know what I was thinking. And when I pulled it out, I smelled it. I was mesmerized. This is, I have not smelled anything like this. I have not smelled anything like this. You get that lemon, that lime, that apple. It's like a sweet Christmas. Again, kind of like in the vein of the Shaga for him, but sweeter, much sweeter, much, much sweeter, but not cloying sweet. Again, it 
keeps that crispness from that apple and that lemon and lime just elevated so it's not cloying and I'm thinking how in the world has nobody talked about this like I had never heard of it until it ended up on my doorstep and I sprayed it in the air that I went to go into YouTube to check if anybody talked about it and only Paulina Shore talked about it I don't understand how one youtuber is on to this it this is stunning look at the dent i have over 200 perfumes look at the dent and i get compliments with this this is beautiful this is beautiful and i already have a backup as well um literally half my bottle is done okay so that should tell you how long i've been loving this i love 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 this again highly recommend sugar for her um definitely this leans more on the feminine side but men listen wear what you want wear wear what makes you happy Again, Shaga for her by Swiss Arabian. Uh, next one up, we have the classic Shaga Aoud. Um, lovely, beautiful praline, vanilla, rosy, slightly Aoud scent. This is definitely um, safe for beginning um, beginner Aoud. Like you, your first tippy toeing into the world of Aoud. I highly recommend this. Um, it's been compared to Lancome Oud Bouquet. I have not personally um, smelled that one yet, and I have no, I have no inclining and no desire to because I'm superbly happy with this. It is long lasting. It is projecting, and I will say this about this: I like to wear perfumes, um, one perfume in the morning and afternoon, and another one in the evening, and another one at night. Um, but when you wear this, you need to be committed to it. You need to be committed to it because um, this will last on your clothes for the whole day and your skin. So when you wear this, just, you know, be committed to it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, you won't be switching up perfumes or you'll be wearing something else and you'll be mixing and layering your scents. And this is another one where my theory about the whole emptying the straw is because when I first sprayed it, I could barely smell anything. And everybody's like, oh my God, this is such a strong beast project, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't smell anything. Then I remembered what I, I learned about al Haramain about um, like just by experimenting, by emptying the straws. So I took it, sprayed it four or five times in the air. The scent completely changed. There was no need for it to sit and macerate. No, khalas, it was done. It was better right then and there. It was much better. So please, when you get Middle Eastern scents, I know it's probably gonna make you cringe because it's gonna think, oh, I'm wasting it. No, you're not. What's wasting it is letting it sit in your collection and not using it. Um, when you get Shagha Faoud and you thought maybe it didn't work for you and say, oh, it's not what I thought it was. Listen to me, take it, go in a corner where you're not gonna bother anybody, spray four or five times in the air, spray it again. Oh, just, this is a masterpiece. This is a classic, Shagha Faoud. Um, this will, again, always be repurchased, constantly fluctuate in and out of my collection. Um, wow, we have a lot to go, gosh, guys. I'm so sorry, I think I might have to do this in two parts. I think I might have to split this in two, I'm sorry. Um, this is Shagha Faoud's um, Aswed. This one it reminds me of one of my family friends. He always smells like this. Oh, this is unisex, by the way. Um, it's a beautiful, incense rosy, Audi smell. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. Again, this is not a safe line buy. This is not for everybody. You have to like more um, Middle Eastern leaning fragrances, darker, heavier, Audi, incense bahuri kind of smells. If you like bahur slash incense, um, it's just beautiful. It's not for everybody. You know how you, you need to like those deeper kind of scents. But I am in love with this scent, and, and um, my family friend put me onto it a while ago. This 